Hello sixth graders, welcome to sixth grade math, fractions and decimals on the number line lesson. Pause while you write the lesson title in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is, I can use a number line to compare rational numbers by completing practice problems with 100% accuracy in multiple attempts. Here are the Arizona State Standards we'll be working on today. The first one is identify and interpret rational numbers given problems in real world contexts. And the second one is plot and identify rational points on a coordinate plane and on a horizontal or vertical number line. We are going to start right off with example 1a graphing negative fractions and decimals. And I want you to take a look at the note above the example where it says that you, in section 6.1, you learned that integers can be negative. And this is the important part, fractions and decimals can also be negative. So we are gonna learn how to graph negative fractions and decimals. So it says graph each number and its opposite. So we're, we're wondering what the question is asking us to do. That's what it's asking us to do. So the number that they're giving us to graph is 3 fourths. So we've sort of stretched out our number line here so that we can see the fractions in between zero and one. So we have one fourth, one half, and three fourths. So we put a dot at three fourths. And then the opposite of three fourths is negative three fourths. So we put a dot at negative three fourths. So it says, and this is kind of an important note here, negative three fourths is the same distance from zero as three fourths. Now we'll look at example 1b. We are Again, going to graph a number and its opposite, but this time the number is a decimal. So the number that we are given is negative 1.6. So we have a number line with everything marked in decimals. So we have negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.8, negative 1.2, and negative 1.6. So that's where we put our mark. And then the opposite of negative 1.6 is 1.6 because it's the same distance away from zero. So we graph that on the right-hand side. Example 2a has us comparing negative 1 half and negative 3 fourths. So we're comparing those to see which one is larger. And this is where things get sometimes a little bit tricky for kiddos. So negative 1 half is to the right of negative 3 fourths. So everything to the right of zero is positive and everything to the left of zero is negative. So since negative 1 half is farther to the right, it is greater than negative 3 fourths. So on the other side, of the zero on the positive side, positive one half is less than positive three fourths. So when we put those negative signs in, it flips that sign. So be very careful with those. And it might be a good idea to remember to graph them so that you can see where everything is. Now we're looking at example two. We are still comparing fractions and mis mixed numbers and we have negative four and five six and negative four and one six. So we graph them so negative four is here and then we're counting by six. So negative four and one six, negative four and two six and so on till we get to negative four and five six. So 
negative four and five sixths is to the left of negative four and one sixth. So that means that negative four and five sixths is less than negative four and one sixth. Example three has us comparing decimals, and we are comparing negative three and eight one hundredths and negative three and eight tenths. So our number line is marked out for us by tenths, and then you can see where we have graphed negative three and eight one hundredths, and it is not quite to the negative three and one tenth. So it's just a little bit to the right of that. And then negative 3 and 8 tenths is down here. So since negative 3 and 8 one hundredths is to the right of negative 3.8 or negative 3 and 8 tenths, then it is greater than negative 3.8. Example four is our real life application. A Chinook wind is a warm mountain wind that can cause rapid temperature changes. The table shows three of the greatest temperature drops ever recorded after a Chinook wind occur occurred. On which date did the temperature drop the fastest? So we need to figure that out and we need to explain our answer. So we are going to graph the numbers on a number line. That's our strategy. So the numbers we need to graph are over here in this temperature change box or column. So we have negative three and one tenth. We have negative five eighths and we have negative two and one fifth. So negative five eighths is the closest to zero. It's right there. And negative two and one fifth is between negative two and negative three. And then negative three and one tenth is to the left of negative three. So negative three and one tenth is farthest to the left. So that means that it dropped the fastest on that on the date that's associated with negative three and one tenth. So that would be January 10th, 1911. Here's what you need to do next to finish this lesson. You need to be sure your notes are complete in your ISN, complete your Google form questions, review your lesson if you need to, and complete your big ideas math assignment in your math spiral notebook. Be sure you submit that when it is 100% correct, not before, and track your progress on your playlist.